Hello everyone, welcome again to the show. And today we're here with Peter to talk about Hi. Delta queries and change notifications. So Peter, how about you get us started with what are Delta queries and what are change notifications? Sure, thanks. So we call this area uh, change tracking. There's basically um, a class of scenarios where, where you want your application to react to changes to a certain resource. So you can imagine, let's say, uh, groups in your organization. You want to know when uh, memberships change so you can take some action. Mm -hmm. Or maybe you want to um, monitor new emails coming into user mailboxes and you want to take some action or maybe scan their content. And it wouldn't be practical for you to call the GET API in Microsoft Graph to always get everything and look for new things. Uh, for that reason, we have two features um, for these types of scenarios. One of them is called Delta Query. Mm -hmm. It's very similar to a GET API, but uh, it's a separate function, and it will get you all the current states, so all the all the groups or all the emails in your mailbox. But the, at the end, it will give you what we call a Delta link, and you can persist that link, and you decide when you want to call again. And mm -hmm. you use the link to call again after a few seconds, few minutes, a few days. And uh, the API is only going to return the net new changes, the additions, the removals, the modifications to the collection of your resources. So I call in a set of resources. Mm -hmm. And after I finish paginating on the results, yeah. I get a Delta link. And with that Delta link, after some time, I can come back and yes. get only the things that have changed since the last time that I created that token. That's right. right? So it's, it's like a polling model where mm -hmm. you, the app, decide how often you want to pick up the changes. Yep. Um, and it's great. It's very simple. Um, the other feature we have, we call it change notifications. So it's a, it's a different way of accomplishing the same thing. You create what we call a subscription. In that subscription, you tell us what's the resource that you're interested in. And you register an HTTPS endpoint. And after that, we, Microsoft Graph, will tell you when there are changes. So mm -hmm. you're just sitting there waiting for us to notify you about changes. Mm -hmm. Um, and um, typically, those subscriptions are good for up to three days, but you can renew them. So you can you can say, hey, I'm still interested and keep that stream So you mentioned going. the endpoint needs to be HTTPS. What mm -hmm. are some of the other things that I, as a developer, need to do in order to stand up the webhook endpoint? Well, it, 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 that's up to you. There mm -hmm. are different technologies you can use. Um, we like Azure Functions. I'm going to show a demo later where it's very easy just to set up an Azure function to receive these notifications. Okay. But of course, you could host that any way you want. Um, it's it's not tied to Microsoft Graph. Okay. We just call you, and so make sure it's reachable for us. Yes, and there's also, in order for you to know that it's my endpoint, there's a challenge involved, right? Sure, there's a certain protocol you can read more uh, about in our documentation mm -hmm. where we validate that your endpoint is up and running. And uh, there's also a way for you to store a secret with us so you can tell that the notifications are coming from the um, authentic subscription that you okay. created. So you've talked about Delta queries and ch change notifications with creating a subscription, mm -hmm. a webhook. Uh, when do I decide to use which, depending on my application needs? Yeah, we, we recommend that you really base this choice on, um, on your scenario. Mm -hmm. So let's discuss a simple one. Let's say you're building an app that maybe runs in a single organization, and it wants to react to changes to groups. So maybe you're provisioning an external system. And let's say that you're OK with this happening every few minutes. It's not like a real-time scenario that, that, that you care about uh, speed, so to speak. So in that case, Delta Query would be probably the best choice. It's the simplest. You don't need any extra infrastructure. And it's very much like a GET API with mm -hmm. the addition of the Delta link. So all you really need to add to your code is the ability to persist those Delta links. And even if you had more than one organization, you can easily pull each organization separately every few yeah. minutes. No big deal. Uh, but if we look at a different scenario, let's say you want to uh, look at all the emails coming in into a lot of mailboxes, thousands of mailboxes, maybe even millions. It wouldn't be practical for you to pull each mailbox Every separately, yeah. especially if you want this to be near real time. You want to react mm -hmm. as soon as the email uh, arrives. So for that type of scenario, change notifications are much better. Uh, you can create a lot of them and you can point them all to a single HTTPS endpoint that you have, mm -hmm. and um, and it will happen very rapidly without you do making any unnecessary calls. Um, 
if you choose to host your endpoint on something like Azure Functions, you can also very easily scale up your solution as your app is deployed in more and more tenants. So it seems like there's a little bit of a higher bar for for the change notifications for subscriptions, right? Like where I have to have my server up and running and I have to manage the subscriptions. And then for Delta, I can just call it as an, you know, just calling a get API, right? Definitely. And the function. Definitely mm -hmm. it's more involved, but it uh, pays off when you have a scenario where yep. you're benefiting from from that uh, characteristic of that feature. Good. Do you want to show us a demo? Yeah, of course. Let's first look at the Delta Query feature. Uh, in this example, I'm going to use the Groups API. Uh, and my goal is to set up a Delta Query that allows me to find uh, new or new members in the group or members being removed. As you can see here, it is pretty much looks exactly like the regular Get API, but I have added the Delta function here. So if I execute this request, you'll see that it um, will first return the full collection of group resources in my organization. I only selected the ID and the members. So as you can see, these are all the groups I have and with their members. Gives me a next link like a normal API would, so I can page through the full state. And oddly, at the very end, when I'm done paging the current state, uh, the API is going to return me a Delta link. We can uh, fast forward this process for some APIs, like you see here for the Groups API, it supports this operator, Delta Token Latest. So if I just run it like that, it'll skip that state enumeration and it'll just give me the latest Delta link. So what I did was I took that link and I can call it here. And as you can see, it's giving me an empty result set because there are no changes. So let me quickly switch to the Azure portal. I have a group here. I'm going to remove one of the users from the group. And I'm going to add another user. And now let's go back and use the same link that I used before make a request. As you can see now, there are two, um, there's actually a single item returned. It's for this group. And it tells me two things, that one of the users with this ID was added as a member, and that another user was removed from the group. So using this very simple approach, I can, uh, I can detect changes. Uh, in a real world scenario, I would now take the newer Delta link and use it for future queries so I can incrementally discover changes. Now let's, let's have a look at what this looks like with change notifications. So there's, uh, there's a special API called subscriptions. Um, I can call this API, make a post call to create a subscription. Let's look at the parameters that are required. First of all, I am specifying what resource I'm interested in. And in this example, it's all the groups in my organization. Then I provide an expiration date up to three days. Um, and unless I renew this subscription, um, it will be automatically removed at this point. And then I tell Microsoft Graph where to post change notifications. So as you can see here, I'm using an Azure function, but it could be any um, HTTPS endpoint. Um, you can also see that I'm using an API key um, to make sure that um, other callers cannot call this, this function. So I created this subscription already. I can do a get on the same subscriptions API to confirm that it's still there, registered and active. So let's see what it looks like, um, what happened when I made that change. So I'll switch to um, Azure portal again. This is my Azure function. That's the code of it. Uh, there's, there's a little bit of an initialization and validation code, but really what I'm doing here is I'm parsing the content of the notification and I am just logging it into my Azure storage. So if I quickly switch to um, what I received when I removed 
and added one user. This is just the formatting my app produces. So this is the raw notification. As you can see in the, it has the ID of the resource um, and it's right here. And in the resource data section, it tells me the interesting things about the change. So again, similarly to what we saw with Delta queries, shows me that one user was removed and one user was added. What's important to remember about change notifications is that they do not currently contain the actual uh, rich data about the resource. So if I wanted to see who those users are, I would have to make follow-up calls using Microsoft Graph to fetch them using these IDs. Well, that looked easy. Was it very difficult to set up? Uh, it's very easy uh, using Azure Functions. We have some code out there that you can reuse to um, set up your notification endpoints. So. So code out there means samples, right? Of course. So samples we have on GitHub, uh, github.com slash Microsoft Graph. And there you'll be able to find these samples for change notifications and for Delta query, as well as all of suite of samples for all of the rest of Microsoft Graph and the functionality that it has to offer. So thank you, Peter, for joining us today. And thank you, you for watching and happy coding. Thank you.